Welcome back to another video with the Sports Scoop. It's your favorite NFL Week 8 predictions. We had a couple of nail biters in Week 7. The Jets almost held the Bills, but the Bills were able to prevail. We've got some surprising ones in here, so be sure to stay tuned for those. Let's get into our first game of Week 8, Thursday Night Football. Actually, a good game. Divisional ma- matchup between the Falcons and Panthers. Um, the Falcons, again, choked to the Lions. I, I, there's a... I don't know how. I mean, I, I think, and it's it's so funny. I was watching the game, and and the Todd Gurley like by accident touchdown was the funniest thing I've ever seen. I was because I I was playing against the guy who had Todd Gurley in fantasy. It's just like you, a touchdown loses you the game essentially. It's just the funniest thing. The Panthers have been playing well, and I just I don't I don't see the Panthers winning this one though, and I might just be riding the Falcons as I have been, but I think the Falcons win this one 27 to 13. Yeah, I think that the Falcons, of course, have looked really good overall, but then towards the end of games, they've just been really throwing and they really have not done well to hold their leads. I mean, they're one and six and they could be seven and oh. Um, I'm, I'm going to be completely blatant with you. Like they could be seven and oh, and I think the Panthers, They've had so far a better season than a lot of people were expecting, especially without uh, star running back Christian McCaffrey. I think that with McCaffrey due back pretty soon, I think that Panthers' hopes are going to be high for this one. And I'm actually going to give this one to the Panthers 28 24. He might even be back for this game, I think. Yeah, you never know. Yeah. Vikings uh, against the Packers. Again, great matchup. And usually this is like one of the best matchups of the season, but the Vikings have been absolutely terrible. Coming off a of bye week, they should be a bit, you know, a bit more healthy, a bit more ready to play and ready to win. Justin Jefferson had a great game. I just don't like Kirk Cousins. I don't see a future with him in the Vikings. So I think the Packers take this one 33 to 27. Yeah, the Vikings have not been great uh, pretty recently. Kirk Cousins in particular has not been very good. Uh, the Packers this week, the return of Devontae Adams. I know he was back last week, but Rodgers really played awfully last week. Um, but week seven, Devontae Adams went crazy. He had like 190-something yards, two touchdowns. I'm going to give this one to the Packers handedly 35-20. to 20. Titans, Bengals, and I, hate, I like Joe Burrow, but it's just – there's there's a certain point where he can do as much as he can do. Tyler Boyd's been playing well. Giovanni Bernard stepped in and was what and was good. AJ Green as, again has not been good. T Higgins and I think AJ Green should be someone they should look to trade because I think they have receivers there that are good enough. I think Boyd is is now Burrow's favorite target and I think going into this game it's going to be a offensive game. I think Bengals are going to need a score and keep the the score high up. I just I don't see them winning. I don't see a way for them to win. I think their defense isn't that good, and their offensive line's awful. Against Jadavian Clowney and Simmons on that defensive line, I just I don't see the Bengals winning this one. So I have the Titans in this one, twenty-eight to fourteen. I think the Titans have looked like one of the one of the best teams in the NFL right now. Derrick Henry's playing pretty well. I mean, he had the two hundred yard rushing game uh, in Week Six, and. I think, though, that the one weakness that the Bengals will have to try to exploit is that Titans secondary. They have not been playing great as of recent. I mean, they let up uh, multiple touchdown passes to Roethlisberger in Week 7. I think that if Joe Burrow can really get it going to guys like Tyler Boyd uh, on deep passes, and I mean, even short passes that just threaten the secondary, they could stand a chance, but I don't think he's going to be able to. I'm going to give this one to the Titans. Um, we'll go 31-21. to 21. Jets, Chiefs, uh, there's not much to say here. Um, the Jets, this organization is one of the worst organizations and teams I've ever seen. They are a mess. Uh, I don't know. I mean, there's no way they win this game. Chiefs win this on 37 to 14. Even though Surge is not here, I am still going to rag on the Jets. I love making fun of him for being a Jets fan, but I mean, I the Jets are just pretty terrible. They blew a lead against the Bills. Uh, last week, and there's no way they're going to be able to hold their own against the Chiefs. Uh, honestly, blowout maybe 45 to 13. Colts and Lions. I believe the Colts. Yeah, the Colts are coming off a bye. Uh, Lions. Matt Stafford is 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 an underrated quarterback. He's led this team and had a great like one of the the best drive of Week Seven, um, winning that game. 
the thing is the Colts have a good defense. They are not the Falcons defense, the bad Falcons defense that Kenny Galladay was able to, you know, eat against. And I think the Colts will give them some problems here. So I have the Colts in a close one, 27, 24. I think the Colts have looked pretty solid to start the season off uh, four and two coming off of a bye week, but the lions in the, against the Falcons, I feel like, I mean, it was a nice, I mean, they, Game-winning drive from Stafford, game-winning touchdown to Hawkinson. Really just, I think the Lions have looked good, but the Colts, unfortunately for the Lions, have looked better. Which is why I'm going to give this one to the Colts, 24-21. Close one, though. Best game of the week, in my opinion. There's actually a lot of good games looking at the schedule now. Steelers-Ravens. Oh, the Steelers, have they've shown they are Super Bowl contenders. And they everyone was saying they haven't beaten a good team, and they handed it to the Titans at the Titans and they're the real deal. Deontay, jo- their receiving core is really good. The only thing I'm going to say is Claypool is not the people, the as good as people thought because Deontay Johnson is back now and is taking, you know, Claypool's targets, I guess. Um, the Ravens coming off a of buy. Um, I don't know. I think I'm going to give this, I'm going to give this to the Ravens and Ravens win this one in a lower scoring game, 23, 21. Yeah, I disagree. I think the Ravens have not looked like a five and one team, just to be completely honest with you. I think Lamar has not looked like his MVP season self and the Steelers defense have been able to shut down everybody they faced, including Derrick Henry. They held him just 70 yards and a touchdown, which uh, may sound impressive, but for Derrick Henry, it's not. Um, I think that, the Steelers have been easily the best defense in the league, and Roethlisberger's really getting it going to his multiple receivers. Deontay Johnson had a big week back. Uh, Juju, Ray Ray McLeod, and if Chase Claypool can have another big week, the Ravens are going to have a hard time, which is why I'm going to give this one to the Steelers, 27-21. Uh, to 21. The Los Angeles Rams against the Miami Dolphins. Tua will be starting in this one. I'm excited. I think... The this is a really a toss up. I think Tua it could either be really good or he could get benched for Ryan for Fitzpatrick halfway through the game. So I think just because Tua is new, I think the Rams take this one, um, thirty one to twenty three. This is actually a really interesting call from the Dolphins, and I'm not sure I can agree with it. I think that they put Tua in in garbage time, and I agree with that decision uh, wholeheartedly, but. They're a three and three team in a division where the Bills are kind of struggling to regain their footing on top. I think that they had real pre- playoff hopes, and I don't know that putting Tua in is going to uh, solidify uh, anything better or give them really that playoff spot, uh, which is why I'm going to give this one to the Rams, more of a veteran presence at quarterback in Jared Goff. I'm going to give this one to the Rams uh, 28 to 24. Patriots Bills, Patriots getting their ass handed to them 33 to 6. That was uncalled for. I know I didn't call that. I don't know how that happened. Cam Newton has come back and has not been good. And that's concerning, especially from the start that they did have. The Bills, do not be happy if you're a Bills fan. That was not an impressive performance in any way. Stefan Diggs didn't have a great game. They were down at half. I think the Jets, that was the first time they were ever leading at half. So, I think the Bills still win this one. Uh, I think the Bills win this one 25 to 20. I, right now, I'm not high on either of these teams. The Patriots, Cam Newton just threw three interceptions and 98 yards um, against the Niners' injured defense. And I think that he has not looked good ever since coming back. He looked pretty bad week six, and then he looked awful in week seven. The Bills didn't score a touchdown against the Jets. However, the Bills are an overall better team, and the Bills are going to take this one. They're going to score a little bit more, 31-17. to Raiders uh, against the Browns. The Browns, again, not a I, I, an impressive performance, but against a not-great Bengals team, letting them score a lot of points on them. Uh, the Raiders, uh, you know, had a good week. Derek Carr is in my top 10. I think he's a really, really good quarterback. Um, I, this is a toss up, but I, I'm going to give this to the Raiders. I think they have what it takes. Raiders take this one 28 to 20. I actually, I mean, Raiders did not have a great week. I mean, they got beat up by the Bengals who or sorry, by the Buccaneers who have possibly one of the best offenses in the league, uh, an offense that is coincidentally adding Antonio Brown. Uh, I think that Carr was banged up for a moment. Uh, I know he was questionable return. Uh, I'm going to give this one to the Browns though. They looked 
they've looked okay. The Bengals almost came back on them, but uh, the Browns have looked pretty solid. Uh, so I'm going to give this one to the Browns, 27 to 24. Moving on to our next game, we have Chargers Broncos. Uh, Herbert with an absolutely incredible game, at least for your fantasy owners. I think he had almost 40 points. Drew Locke wasn't playing great, but I think there's definitely room for improvement. Um, I think it's just there's a hole there for wide receiver, and Jerry Judy really hasn't been the answer, um, which I think literally this is the perfect situation for him. Uh, and he just hasn't stepped up like CeeDee Lamb or even you know Justin Jefferson, who aren't even wide receiver ones. Uh, but I think the Chargers take this one. I think they deserve it, and they've been a good team. Chargers take this one 31 to 25. Justin Herbert has looked really good, and I'm lucky I picked him off of picked him up off of waivers pretty early in fantasy. He's looked really good. He's got uh I think maybe 14 touchdown passes in the last four weeks. Uh I might be wrong, but I think so. Uh the Chargers just have looked good. They got Keenan Allen back this week. He had a solid game. Broncos, on the other hand, have not looked great. Drew Locke came back, but was unable to do much for them. As you said, Jerry Judy hasn't been great, and the running game hasn't been going. So I'm going to give this one to the Chargers, um, 31-13. to 13. Saints-Bears, another really, really good game. Uh, the Saints have, have – we're, we're looking good. Uh, the Bears, obviously – were they coming off a bye as well? No. No, they're not. Sorry, they're playing tomorrow. Um, this, I th- – I don't know. Is Mike, Michael Thomas, was he going to be back or no? I don't think so. I don't, if he's not, but the, uh, I don't know. I'm going to give this to the saints. I think the saints, they, they have it. And I think that their defense is good enough and their offense. And I think breeze has started to understand that Michael Thomas may not be back. So he's adjusted to it. Saints win this one 32 to 30. The bears are potentially the quietest five and one team in the league. Uh, the Bears, I feel like they should only be 3-3, three and three, and yet they're not. I don't know why they benched Trubisky a couple of weeks ago, but, I mean, clearly whatever they did is working. Uh, I am going to give this one to the Saints, though. I feel like Drew Brees is just too much, uh, too much for the Bears secondary to handle. I'm going to give this one to the Saints, 33-28. to 28. We have 49ers Seahawks, another incredible game if the 49ers weren't absolutely decimated with injuries, but they showed to beat a decent Patriots team. Although the Seahawks, they, they, their offense is just unstoppable. Um, and I think it's going to be another high scoring one. Seahawks 35, 27. I think the Niners actually looked really good this week, uh, beat up a pretty bad Patriots team, but I think Jeff Wilson was a highlight of the game. However, he did go down with that injury uh, I think towards the end of the third quarter, maybe the fourth quarter. Not going to be able to keep up with the high scoring Wilson, Carson, Metcalf, Lockett. They just have too many options, and which is why I'm going to give this one to the Seahawks. Uh, we'll go 27 to 20. Our Cowboys, Eagles. <laughs> this division is just like, like terrible. There's one game between the first and second place. Uh, I don't know, man. There's just really bad. Uh, like the cat Andy Dalton got like <laughs> destroyed. Um, and their other quarterback, I don't even know who he is, and is a rookie. For, like I don't even know round he's drafted from. I don't even know the college. I don't. Do the cow? There's no way the Cowboys win. There's no way they win with that quarterback. I think the Eagles. I just. I think the Eagles win this one, twenty to seventeen. As much as I hate to say it, I I honestly think both of these teams kind of suck right now. Um, Each of them have two wins, but the Cowboys are on their third-string quarterback, and the Eagles are on, in my opinion, maybe a second, third-string quarterback, Carson Wentz. I I don't love Wentz, and the Cowboys without Prescott, Zeke is not playing well. I just feel like if I could predict a 0-0 tie, I would, but unfortunately I can't do that. I'm going to give the Eagles the win. 21 to 17 giants buccaneers last game the giants getting lucky playing thursday night and then monday night getting a long break uh but i think they're playing the buccaneers who are are really good the buccaneers uh, arguably the best team in the nfl or one of the best team in the nfl so i that's not that's not true sorry but i I don't know. I think the Buccaneers have a really, really good team. They have a good offense and a good defense. Antonio Brown will be back. And I just, I don't, I don't know how the Giants are going to defend them, 
Buccaneers win 31-17. Antonio Brown will not be back for this Week 8 matchup. I, I thought he was only suspended to Week 8. I think his suspension ends Week 8, and that's if the NFL approves oh, okay. of his reinstatement. I'm not, I'm not sure if they will or not, but maybe Antonio Brown will be back, and he'll just add weapons to this Tampa Bay offense. They already have Brady, Godwin, Evans, Gronk. Ronald Jones has been playing well. Fournette. And now you're adding possibly one of the best receivers in the last 10 years in Antonio Brown. Um, I don't see any way that the Giants win this. I mean, Daniel Jones tripped, and we – I mean – we lost, found a way to lose to a five foot six running back catching the ball in the back of the end zone. But um, I, I think there's no way the Giants win this. I'm going to give this one to the Bucks. High scoring one f- for the Bucks, uh, 35 to 14. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, you know, we're starting to post more videos. So if you do enjoy, it really does mean a lot when you guys like and subscribe and get us, uh, you know, up to maybe 1300. Um, and as well, comment down below and like literally anything that comes to your mind, video ideas, thoughts on the video, predictions, questions, we, we will always respond. Um, so drop a comment and we will respond. Uh, our socials will be on the right of me here, Instagram, TikTok, as well as our podcast. Uh, we post like, you know, posts about different sports there, kind of questions, interactive polls on our story. So make sure to go follow us over there. We're almost at a thousand. So if you could help us get there, that'd be amazing. And you can DM us on there. We try and get through all of our messages. So if you want to talk to us there, we will definitely respond. And uh, yeah, that was it for our uh, NFL predictions. We will see you in our next video. And thank you for watching.